Good morning, folks. We've got space weather, had a special video come out last night. We'll look at top science articles, including something we said to watch for just days ago. Starting with our star, following the filament eruption on the departing limb yesterday, we had another one release immediately to the south of it. Coronagraphs do indicate both eruptions are heading out that way, to the right from this perspective, ahead of Earth's orbit, and will not impact the Earth. We still have more filaments to watch, but this morning, I'm watching the sunspots. Just a few minutes ago, we had a nearly X-class solar flare. Luckily, this one came from the departing sunspot group on the north, but there is more to see. We'll see this twice and find both the incoming groups on the south are developing relatively quickly. We will be monitoring for solar flaring here as they cross the Earth-facing heliographic longitudes. Let's go to the global climate report that just came out for August. This is what the world gets to see spread around the internet. But as happens every month, they white out the cold areas, and this is the real data. Every month it's the same thing. They use the near average qualitative marks to create a map that's very misinformative of the situation, making it look like the world is just cooking. In reality, got a nice mix of both. Excellent paper up next on solar forcing of the East Asian monsoon. We've seen several of these studies suggest the same thing, and here they are pegging an 80-year cycle in the monsoon tied to solar Gleisberg cycles, and a decadal variation tied to the volcanic activity that is more prominent at sunspot minimum. A nice double dose of correlation there. On a more targeted front, we find the global electron content heavily modulated when the sun gets active. Just a good reminder here that whenever the ionosphere is affected, as happens globally when the sun gets active, it has an effect on the global atmospheric electric circuit, which modulates clouds, precipitation, lightning, wind, and surface temperatures. Folks, last night we got this special video, how the nearby stars all tell the same story of the encroaching galactic current sheet and do so in perfect order in a line right at the sun. We are next. Just a couple days ago, we got this video I hope you saw, and one of the things to watch for was more animal strandings and migration issues. They have been surging recently, especially in species known to use Earth's magnetic field for navigation. Almost a bit too on point here, we are seeing record numbers of loggerhead sea turtle strandings on the beaches of the Gulf of Mexico. Scientists are baffled, and they say because they can't peg it to disease, injury, or water temperature. Well, it just so happens these creatures are some of the best known magnetic navigators in the world. Remember that the North Magnetic Pole is heading away from the Americas, across the Arctic towards Russia. So, their navigation from the Gulf of Mexico towards that pole each year would be telling them to go further and further. It's precisely the sort of effect in the animal kingdom we said to watch for, and it indicates the continued magnetic shift of our planet, bit by bit fortifying the focused vigilance for observing the details we've come to have at this channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Not sure if we'll be around tomorrow as I may take a day off, sort of up in the air at the moment. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow or Sunday. Right here, but right now, it's 4.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.